Okay, and our last speaker is Evgeny Zorin, completeness and saturatedness in the reliability theorems. It's a pleasure for me to give a talk here. Uh, compactness and saturatedness in the finability theorems. <clears throat> so what, are, what uh, is this all about? What are definability the theorems? So they are theorems of the following form. A class of models of a particular kind is definable in some language, if and only if some conditions on this class hold. And uh, here the term definable can be can, may vary, definable by a single formal, by a, class, a set of formulas, and the conditions are usually formulated in terms of the closure that the class K or its complement is closed under, the, under some relations or operations. Uh, and after analyzing several kinds of uh, theorems like these in different la languages in different, for different models, uh, it turns out that the, the notions of uh, compact and saturated classes of models uh, are important for these kind of results. And uh, more specifically, uh, some operations that transform models to models uh, that guarantee compactness and saturatedness of classes of models uh, also are important in this uh, study. Uh, and let us first review, recall some, one of the most uh, prominent results in, in logic. Th this is the Keisler's definability theorem or axiomatizability uh, criterion. So let K be a class of first order models in some fixed signature, then it is uh, definable, it is axiomatizable, that is definable by some set of first order formulas, if and only if it is closed under elementary equivalence and alter products where elementary equivalence, equivalence between two models means that they satisfy the same, uh, the same formulas for closed for subtle sentences. And uh, the second statement of this theorem, a class is finitely axiomatizable if and only if it, uh, both K and the, its complement are closed under elementary equivalence and alter products. So we can summarize these two statements in uh, the following table with two lines. In each line, we list the less, the, the, uh, those operations and relations under which the class should be closed. And uh, if we want to get rid of the linguistic relation elementary equivalence in, the, in these two results, we can do this at the price of uh, invoking the ultra power in the remaining empty cell. This, is, uh, this, this result was obtained by Keisler again. And improved by Schellack, Kessler used the generalized continuum hypothesis to prove this, and uh, Schellack, 10 years later, uh, succeeded to avoid this. Uh, and our aim is to analyze what is the role of the operations of ultra power and ultra product that make uh, it possible to obtain theorems like this. What are the specific features of these two operations? But before that, uh, let us notice some non-symmetry in this table. We have uh, ultra, two ultra products in the last line, ultra product and ultra power in the first line. It's not very symmetric. Why is, why is that? The question is that uh, this is not the whole story. Or well, I would say the scientists didn't tell us the whole truth. There, uh, there are two more things that make the, the table complete and symmetric. And we can formulate this uh, more generally, more abstractly, uh, not for first order language and first order structures, but by other arbitrary language and, and arbitrary structures. So consider the situation, we have some language that is just a set, its elements are called, for, called formulas, some class of what we call models or structures, and a relation between models and formulas, the truth relation. A is true in M, or M is a model for A. 
And we are interested in the in question which classes of models are definable by a single formula of, uh, of the language L, by a set of formulas, and there are two more options that form a, a nice picture. To define these two, uh, th these extra options, I need this not notation, a mo models of a, a set of formulas gamma is the, set, is the class of all models in which this, this gamma is true. So, I will write K belongs to L, to the blackboard L, and say that K is finitely axiomatizable if it is the, exactly the class of models of some formula, signal formula of our language. I say that K is axiomatizable without finitely, and use this symbol, intersection L, if it is the class of models of some set of formulas, or equivalently, if it is the intersection of some classes from the first line. This, are, this is easy to see that it is equivalent. Since we have intersection, it is natural to take union. I will call these classes co-axiomatizable. I'm not sure if this uh, term is not used in, an, in any other different meanings. <laughs> and uh, of course we can take unions of intersections of classes from the first line. And uh, perhaps uh, we can go further, but fortunately we don't need to do this. Uh, this is explained on the next sli slide, but before that I will I, like, I would like to remind the terminology from the first or, or from the first order or elementary languages. Uh, these four options are called elementary classes, delta elementary classes, sigma elementary, and sigma delta elementary. So delta, delta elementary are classes of first order structures that are definable by a set of first or, of closed first order formulas. Now, why don't we need uh, further species of classes? Uh, because Classes that are re representable as unions of intersections of classes of the first kind are the same as the classes representable as intersections of unions of the first class, of the first uh, type of classes. And so all remaining species collapse to, to just four. <coughs> and uh, uh, many results in, mod in uh, mathematical logic are may be interpreted as saying something about classes in these uh, species, I, I, I call them. Uh, for example, Keisler's theorem gives necessary and sufficient condition for a class to be in the lower species or in the left species. So it's, uh, it is uh, natural to ask what are the criteria net, natural, uh, necessary and sufficient conditions for the other two species. Uh, here are just examples of Finitely axiomatizable, axiomatizable classes. For example, the class of all groups is finitely axiomatizable, of all infinite groups is axiomatizable, but not finitely. Of all, the class of finite groups is co-axiomatizable, it is the union of, of finitely axiomatizable classes. There are classes that belong to the upper uh, species, but no, not to the low, lower ones. For example, infin infinite finitely many dimens uh, finitely dimensional vector spaces. So this is a combination of finite and infinite. And there are, of course, classes of, uh, of models that, are not, that do not uh, belong to this hierarchy of species. For example, well-ordered sets. Okay, so from this point of view, we can uh, review again the Keisler's result. Very easily add the first two lines. The last two lines are exactly Keisler's theorem. And we obtain a symmetric table. And again, if we want to get rid of the linguistic equivalence relation, so elementary equivalence, we can do this at the price of adding the ultra power in all empty cells. And the main result for the, the main reason for the symmetry in these tables is the fact that uh, we have, we can internalize negation. If a formula is not true in a model, in the first order model, then its negation is true. So negation, so a meta negation can be internalized in the, on the level of land of, of formulas. <coughs> now, first we can formalize, um, formulate general criteria for the upper species. Uh, as I said, we can uh, define the, no the notion of equivalence of two models. They satisfy the same formulas. If we have only one implication here, we say that one model is subsumed by another model. And in, this term, we can, in these terms, we can easily form, uh, formulate the necessary and sufficient condition for a class to be in the upper species. 
So a class of, of models is representable as the union of intersection of a finitely axiomatizable classes, if and only if it is representable as the intersection of union of finitely axiomatizable classes, if and only if it is simply closed under this subsumption between models. And uh, we can even add explicit representation of this class as the union of intersections and intersection of unions of finitely axiomatizable classes. Uh, uh, usually this, the equivalence of A1, A2 uh, uses the axiom of choice. Here we can prove, uh, we succeeded to prove it without the axiom of choice, so very easy. Uh, Next, next, we want to characterize similarly the other three lines. Axiomatizable classes, finitely axiomatizable, and co-axiomatizable. And here is where the compactness property uh, comes. We call a, com a class of models L compact, or I will sim simply say compact, if, uh, roughly speaking, the, the compactness theorem holds for this, for this class. Namely, if every finite for every set of formulas gamma, if every finite subset is satisfiable in K, then the whole set gamma is satisfiable in K. Satisfiable means that there is a model, a single model, where all these formulas from this set is true. Uh, examples of compact, compact classes are well known. In fact, here I just listed all axiomatizable classes. Everything that is listed here are axiomatizable, and this is not a coincidence. This is just a general fact. Before I formulate this general fact, I, I need uh, two very easy, very simple notions. The truth relation respects negation if, as I said uh, before, uh, we can internalize negation. A formula is not true if and only if its negation is true. So the language can, has some connective called negation. And uh, the truth relation respects conjunction if the language has the connective conjunction. Uh, such that uh, A and B is true in M, if and only if A and true is true and B is true. For most languages, we have the last property. The first is uh, sometimes uh, wrong. And uh, an easy observation that if, we, if the truth relation respects negation, then we don't need to have two relations, subsumption between models and equivalence between models. They coincide. Now I can formulate the first general result, the first general definability theorem that uses compactness. So if we have a system of models, languages, and truth relation that are uh, such that the truth relation has neg respects negation and conjunction, and the class of all models is compact, then we have the following three criteria. For example, a class is axiomatizable if and only if it is closed under Elementary equivalence and compact. And this class is compact. So co compactness is exactly the property that distinguishes axiomatizable classes from so the, le the less species from the upper species in our hierarchy of four species. And so this can be formal, uh, summarized in a table like this. Again, a sim symmetric, quite a symmetric table. <clears throat> but as I said, the definability theorems usually are formulated in terms of closure of the class under some, uh, under some relations and operations. So far we don't have any operations. So let us introduce the uh, notion of a compactification operation. We will consider operations on models. So it takes, an operation takes some list of models, MI, uh, and returns a, a new model. For example, Cartesian product of groups of or whatever. Ultra product, disjoint union in model logic, this operation is, uh, is famous. <clears throat> we call an operation compactification if, firstly, it preserves, it is true preserving operation. If some formula was true in all models in our arguments, then the resulting model is again a model of our formula. And Closure under this operation guarantees that the class is compact. Examples. There are many examples of uh, compactification operations. For example, the ultra product of first order models or of Kripke models are compactification operations. 
the ultra union, uh, this is the operation uh, applied to a family of pointed model, Kripke models, models with a distinguished point. We take the disjoint union of Kripke models, take the ultra filter extension of this, and uh, some specific distinguished point in this big model. Uh, by the way, this operation was introduced by Ida Venema in some paper 1991, 1999, uh, in some, at some conference dedicated to the 50th, 50th anniversary of Johann van Bentham. And uh, this, this paper sometimes uh, mistakenly cited as modal definability, purely modal. The first word is model. Uh, anyway, so today we can celebrate 20th uh, anniversary of this, of this notion. <laughs> uh, an easy observation is that if our system has a compact, any compactification operation, then the class of all models is compact. So this, the first one of the conditions of our previous theorem is now, is, we don't need it anymore. And now we can formulate uh, our previous theorem using already closure under this operation. So suppose that we have a logical system, truth relation respects negation and conjunction, <clears throat> and in this system there is a compactification operation. Then, similar to the Kastner theorem, we obtain a general result like this. So, for example, a class is axiomatizable if and only if it is closed under elementary, under equivalence in this language, and closed under this compactification operation. In full compliance with Keisler's theorem, as I said, the ultra product is one of the examples of uh, compactification operations. Now we want to get rid of the linguistic relation, this equivalence relation modular L. Again, we can do this, but we need a new kind of operation for this, to fill the empty cells in the table. In the table. Namely, in many languages and, and um, types of models, there is a natural similarity relation between models. For example, isomorphism of first order structures, isomorphism of Kripke models, by simulation, by simulation between Kripke models, and there are various different notions of bisimulation for different model languages, well, tense model languages, uh, graded model languages, uh, uh, model languages with universal modality, and so on. There are many different variations of bisimulation. Uh, the common property is that if two, two models are similar in this sense, they satisfy the same formulas. And there is a certain subclass of models, of so-called saturated models with the following distinguished property. So in general, as I said, if two models are similar, then they satisfy the same formulas. But for saturated models, the converse is also true. <clears throat> uh, for example, if we can see the first order structures, saturated, uh, saturated models are what they call omega saturated models. In model logic and Kripke models, uh, there is a notion of modally saturated uh, models. Uh, and so on. There are variations of this notion for other model languages, tense languages, graded model languages, and so on. And now we introduce the notion of a saturated class of models. A class K is saturated, or I should write L saturated, because it the notion depends on L, on the language L. If every model is equivalent to some saturated model from this class again. Okay, I'll keep the, the, two, the two lemma. Uh, so our aim was to uh, eliminate the linguistic relation from our table, and this is possible. Uh, again, the, as the assumptions of this theorem are the same as in the first slide. And uh, this was our first table, and now, it turns into this, so we replaced the linguistic relation by uh, the similarity relation at the price of adding saturatedness at every cell. Okay, this, that's fine, and, but uh, now we want to replace this uh, condition, the class is saturated, by the condition that 
the condition that some that this class is closed under some operation. What kind of operation do we need? Again, an operation, a unary operation this time. So this is an operation that takes one model and returns another model. It is called a saturation operation if it is truth preserving or truth invariant as I write it. So the new model satisfies exactly the same formulas as the, the old one. And the new model is always saturated. Again, I should write L saturated. Exam there are many examples. The ultra power of any model is saturated, provided that the ultra, the ultra filter used for this ultra power is countably incomplete, and the, we have this countable signature, first order signature. Uh, ultra powers can be applied to Kripke models, which are special kind, kinds of first order models. The ultra filter extension, an operation that is widely used in model logic, and the canonical model construction. So we take a model, a Kripke model, take its theory, it is a normal theory. For this, we can build a canonical model. So this is the, our final model. From M, we build M can. And now we can formulate our final form of the definability theorem. So again, if we have truth relation that respects negation and conjunction, if we have two kinds of uh, two operations, one is the comp compactification operation and another the saturation operation, then so here I give the old table, and now we have the new table. In the case of first order logic, uh, we didn't have two things in these cells, because closure under ultra products includes closure under ultra powers. Ultra power is a special kind of uh, ultra product. That's why we didn't have so many operations there. So far we worked with uh, truth relations that respect negation. What if we don't uh, have this property? For example, if we consider model formulas and Kripke models. If some model formula is not true in a model, it doesn't mean that the negation of this mo mod formula is true in the whole model. Uh, on this way, we obtained only partial result. For example, for example th these are results special to model logic so far. So th th this is uh, the summary of special results, so uh, equivalence model, model, model formulas. This is what we know. This uh, arrow is uh, generated submodel, and union with plus is the disjoint union, the operation that is widely used in model logic. The first and the th third line are theorems. The other two lines are open questions. We conjecture that they will be like this, but we don't know it for sure. And again, if we want to get rid of model equivalence, uh, replace it with uh, by simulation, this time the global by simulation, because we can see the models, not point of models. Then we obtain like this. Again, first uh, here, the theorem is only the first and the third line. But as we can see uh, here, the formulation involves some operations and uh, relations that are specific to the language. It's not clear how to formulate this, this in, general, in general terms for arbitrary languages and for and, uh, models. Okay, conclusion. Uh, using these general criteria, we can obtain many well-known and uh, perhaps unknown uh, results uh, for various languages and various Mm. kinds of structures, Kripke models, Kripke frames, pointed models, pointed frames, first order, formal, uh, first order structures, and so on. Uh, these results could be extended to other types of models like topological semantics, uh, neighborhood semantics, if we consider model language, for instance, uh, to other languages, extended model languages, to infinitary model to, to infinitary languages, model model of first order or intersonistic, and here we there may be some surprises. For example, if we allow for conjunction uh, for infinitary conjunction of cardinality at most kappa, where kappa is a cardinal, a regular cardinal, then perhaps we will need to modify our notion of compactness. It said that for every finite set of formulas, and now we perhaps will need to say for every subset of formulas of cardinality less than kappa, so our terms, our notions will be modified. And if we allow for conjunction over 
arbitrary set of formulas, then even our hierarchy of four species will be will modify. We will have class, classes of models that are definable by a single formula or by a class of formulas, not a set, because a set of formulas can be collapsed into a single formula. Okay, and uh, another interest, interesting question on whether we, it is possible to obtain results like this for finite structures, finite Kripke models, finite uh, frames, and so on. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Questions, please. Yeah. So, as you said, there is a connection of course between the power and the top products, but it seems that there is no such connection in your definition, in your definition of the compactification and separation. Separation. So, Lose the connection? Yes, yes. In abstract setting, they are two different, uh, possibly unrelated operations. Moreover, saturation is the unit operation, and uh, mm, ultra product, it's not a single operation. It, it has a parameter, a set of indices, an ultra filter, so its properties depend on several parameters. So it's a family of operations. It's not clear how to relate them in abstract setting. I just, I just wanted to uh, mention something that may have some uh, relevance in your setting. So, uh, okay, so in part of your approach, you replace isomorphism uh, by simulation. Or in the case of first order logic, you replace isomorphism by potential isomorphism. Yes. In fact, I just want to mention, I don't know whether that has any relevant for you, is that in some sense, if you do that, you can actually weaken uh, the, the conditions of the Keystone theorem. Because the following is also true, just as an example. Um, the class of formulas uh, is elementary, uh, sorry, the class of models is elementary, if and only if it's closed on the potential isomorphism, mm -hmm. and Alter products. Uh, over powers. Yes. Ultra for the global case, you can get similar results. You use by simulation and just ultra powers. Ultra powers only. Yeah. So you can play a bit with how much the closure you actually want. So I thought that might have some relevance to your style of analysis. Because basically, the, the condition of closure under the similarity relation is so much stronger in your table. Yes. So it looks like just replacing isomorphism by the squiggle. Actually, you replace it by a much stronger condition that allows you on the other half of your table to actually go much weaker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see what you mean. And this might be really relevant to other languages as well, not only to first order. And then one advantage of that way of thinking that I might add is that uh, you don't have to go through this horribly complicated proof. <laughs> of Shina because it's actually very simple to prove. Yeah. Just ask another question. So you give the case of first order logic and then the modal language, which you can see as the fragment. But is it there room for a sort of systematic analysis of various fragments of the first order language, say positive formulas, this and this and that, and see how your results uh, change? You see what I mean? So now you take the full first order language, the modal language is which one particular fragment, but the well, these were just examples of languages. Of course, we can uh, study the uh, definability by some formulas from the fragment of first order language. Uh, and again, these abstract, the results in the abstract form still make sense. Uh, we only need to find the, uh, well, in our terms, the operations that are relevant to this fragment and the, by simula the similarity of the relation that is, uh, again, relevant to this. Uh, so yes, this is also, so these results are applicable to this situation as well. Thank you. Okay, let me also ask you a question. Yeah. Could you please give page 12? Uh, you, uh, here, in, in many places, you use this, uh, that truth relation respects negation. This is very natural condition, but it seems to me that it is uh, relevant very much to the notion of maximality. Yes. Theory is maximal. Yes. In the sense, if you have single model, so set of all 
the sentence is true in, in this model is maximal. But if you have two models, this is not the case. Uh, in, in, right? Yeah. So yeah. it seems to me that uh, respects negation, it sounds to me uh, unusual. Uh, I, I, why not uh, speak about uh, maximal theories? Is it not more natural? Uh, well, perhaps it is not the same, of course. I, I, I'm not sure. I, mm -hmm. I don't, know, don't catch all details. Because uh, if theory respects negation, this means it is maximal. There are no sentences which are neither true nor false, right? No, uh, yes. Neither uh, either true. is true nor negation is true, right? Yes, yes. Uh... <clears throat> It, it, well, it, it's just say, it's just point to think about. <laughs> so, so this is, so the first point is to reformulate these in terms of maximal, maximal, maximal theories. And another thing is that the, an interesting direction is to, to try to obtain something like this without this assumption of, uh, yeah, because it, it is le less common. You will, you will obtain quite a different class of theories. Yes. A much, much larger, more, huge class. This is smaller. Mm -hmm. it, in smaller class, you get more conditions. Well, but this is like advice to think yeah. about. Yes, right? yes, I see what I mean. Yes, that's, that will be interesting. Okay. More questions? Exactly. On time, we finish. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.